Hi, this is Dr. Mercola, and for most of you viewing this, is winter. And associated with the winter, of course, is the flu season. And more than likely, you're being ex exposed to significant pressure in the media and your community to get your flu shot. In fact, when I visited with O'Hare Airport last week, they were even offering flu shots at O'Hare. So I'm sure you're being exposed to it through many of the communities and the buildings that, you, that you're uh, visiting. And part of the reason is because the drug companies that make this and have been able to convince and c really manipulate the public health community to, b to convince them this is a public health crisis. Why? Because more than a million people get the flu every year. And of those, a about a half a million at least are hospitalized. And from those half a, half a million hospitalizations, about 35,000 people die every year from the, ye from the flu or so we're told. If you examine very carefully the CDC statistics, that 35,000 people mostly do not die from the flu, they die from pneumonia. And in fact, the numbers show that less than 1,000 people a year die from the flu. The rest are dying from pneumonia. So the question becomes, does flu vaccine work? And even in the million people who do get the flu, and and are affected by it, how old are these individuals? Well, these individuals are mostly elderly. That's when your immune system becomes uh, diminished, especially as you, is, if you've not adopted these healthy lifestyles. So, and, and those are the individuals that are more likely to, to, to suffer from pneumonia. So does the flu vaccine work for pneumonia? No, it's conclusively been shown in multiple studies not to, not to work. And uh, I've got a list in some of these studies. There's one published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 19, or 2005, three years ago, and one just recently published in The Lancet that showed the flu vaccine does not work for pneumonia. No surprise. But it also doesn't work for the flu. In fact, I challenge anyone to find a study that proves a, a well-done, well-researched trial that, shows, that proves that the flu vaccine works for anyone. It doesn't work. So if it didn't work, then you're only really, if there was no problems, you're only out the inconvenience and the cost to get the flu, flu, flu shot. But unfortunately, that's not the case because the flu vaccine is loaded with, with toxins that you just do not want to put in your system. The first one, and, the, and it's in the majority of the flu vaccines, is mercury. Yes, they're putting mercury in the form of thimerosal, about 25 micrograms. And if you look at the warning size of mercury, that exceeds the toxic dose of mercury that, that is not recommended by the EPA and the CDC unless you're over 550 pounds. Yet it's in every, nearly every dose of, of flu vaccine. Now there's also other things such as phenol, aluminum, ethylene glycol, which is antifreeze, and a variety of other substances that you just do not want to put, do not want to put in your body. So the craziness of this is actually the flu vaccine is recommended for every single person in the U.S., or nearly every single person, because it, 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 in 2005, three years ago, the Federal Advi Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices recommended that infants from the age of six months to five years old be given a flu vaccine every year. And earlier this year, they extended that for all ch children. So just about every single person in the U.S. is recommended to get an annual flu vaccine. So obviously, I do not advise you, in fact, I strongly encourage you to review the evidence, make your own decision, and I suspect if you carefully review the literature, you'll reach the same conclusion I did, which is that it is unwise for you or anyone in your family to receive the flu shot. So there are uh, things that you can do to prevent the flu. Now, wouldn't that be better? Prevention makes a lot more sense. Clearly, you would like to uh, lead the take control of your health lifestyle program, which involves, of course, normalizing your insulin and doing exercise and all the things that I talk about. But there are specific things that will really virtually annihilate the flu. And one has been clearly shown without any question is vitamin D. And the best way to get vitamin D is through sun exposure. Unfortunately, isn't, isn't it an co interesting coincidence that the flu occurs in the winter? So that's when you don't have access to appropriate amounts of sunshine. So the next best thing, ideally, would be to expose your skin to ultraviolet uh, radiation. And you can do that with a safe tanning bed. And a safe tanning bed, 
Uh, there, are, there is a list on my site where you can go and find these commercially available, or for more convenience, you can actually get one to use in your home for you and your family. I think that's the best way because there's very little danger of overdosing on vitamin D. But for whatever reason, you are unable to do that or you can't do that, then the next best step is to make sure that you and your family members are getting enough oral vitamin D. And what is the dose? Well, the dose is a lot higher than you're being told. The dose probably is about 2,000 units, international units, a day for children and up to between somewhere between five and 10,000 units a day for adults. If you're a heavy adult, closer to 300 pounds, then you're going to be closer to the 10,000 units and most, most normal weight adults will be closer to four or 5,000 units. So if you take that every day, the odds of you obtaining the flu are virtually non-existent. Now, of course, a safer way to get that is with the uh, sunlight exposure or the, the UV light exposure through a safe tanning bed. Now, if you do take the, the supplements, ideally it would be best to have your blood checked. It is, uh, and if you're, if you're going to go through the, the, the difficulty and the uh, uh, challenge of getting that, you want to make sure at this point in time that you get that done through LabCorp, not Quest. I've done an earlier video on that that explains the problems with Quest at this point in time. So get that through LabCorp and your level should be over 50 nanograms per milliliter. Now, interestingly, if you're watching this video and it's too late, you or someone you know already has the flu, there is something you can do. You can actually use oral vitamin D in very large doses. And let me tell you what that dose is. The dose is uh, 2,000 international units of vitamin D per kilogram of body weight. So. Uh, that basically you would divide your weight, if you know your weight in pounds, by 2.2 to obtain your weight in kilograms, and you multiply it by 2,000 to obtain your vitamin D dose. So essentially, it's almost 1,000 units per pound of body weight, very close, a little more precise if you use that formula. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you're going to require 200,000 units. If you weigh 100 pounds, you'll require 100,000 units. And that's taken as one dose every day for three days. And if you take it early in the course of the illness, that usually is enough to abort the actual illness. So hopefully this information will give you the, the knowledge you will need to make an informed decision for yourself and your family and your friends so that you will have hard data to, uh, and options as uh, we enter the flu season.